over. And believe it or not, despite the quietness, seven deals did get done with two more still in the offing, potentially three. Now, we're going to round up all of yesterday's action and look ahead to, of course, the weekend's match against Liverpool with your help in the chat box on today's Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for what is another episode of the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every morning at 8 a.m. UK time with our transfer window now closed. The 8 a.m. show uh, transforms from the transfer show into the news show and we'll run through, of course, the rest of the season until a month before the opening of the summer transfer window in which we will then resume the Arsenal transfer show. So thank you, first of all, for everybody that joined me throughout the course of the January window. It was uh, it was not the most exciting. Uh, you compare it to last year where Arsenal signed, you know, three players and we looked pat- particularly quite active and we a surprise signing out of nowhere could happen with Jakob Kivir, of course. And we had the, the Mudrick chase and then Trossard, Piver and... Jorginho on deadline day, there was action all over the place. But uh, ultimately, we didn't get that this time around. But there was still a lot to do and a lot to discuss. And we're going to talk about that and plenty more with you guys and girls in today's morning show. So thank you so much, first of all, for tuning in. Please do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. We're very close now to hitting 54,000 subs. So if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure that you do. And if you're listening on audio platforms, please make sure to leave a five-star review. It really does help us out. Good morning to Kaiser, to Pikachu, to Damien, to Black Shine, Maximius, Rich, Matt G, Mike, Amira, Sweating Merlo, Jimbo, Steve. Uh, we got Stephen and Ismail and The Process, Stevie, Jose, Brad, Glenn joining us. Uh, Dinny, we got Matt G, Louis, uh, Marcus, Tom, and plenty more of you guys and girls as well. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. It is very much appreciated. I hope you've had a really good week. We've made it to Friday. The weekend's here, uh, and we can hopefully look forward to what is going to be a really important, the most important game of Arsenal season so far on Sunday against Liverpool. But first, before we get into part two and your questions, we need to round up all of the stories. Now, yesterday, with it being deadline day, we did complete our, uh, our basically our phone-in show, um, which I said that we would be doing. And we had a really good chat and some really good conversations about Arsenal's transfer window and what this means going forwards. So if you haven't already listened to that, it is the latest upload on the channel before this one. So if you need some uh, an hour or so of listening a little bit later on in your day, you've got that to go and access. It should be up on audio platforms as well. Uh, Moving into the only non-transfer news story that I didn't manage to talk about yesterday because, of course, we were doing a pre-recorded show looking ahead to transfer deadline day, which I hope you appreciate it, by the way, um, was that Tomiyasu and Japan won in their last 16 game. They will now go through to the quarterfinals of the Asia Cup, meaning that Tomiyasu will definitely be out of the the Liverpool game this weekend. Uh, It could be that he's still back, of course, for the next fixture after Liverpool. Um, but yes, they will go through to the next phase and play on February 3rd, which is tomorrow uh, at 11.30 a.m. UK time. So if you want to watch Japan in that and you're based in the UK, you can do it in the morning uh, if you want to watch that one and see how Tomiyasu gets on in that quarterfinal game. It was a very, very quiet January transfer window, as the graphic on the screen through Sky Sports shows. Uh, We spent, as a nation, uh, £96.2 million uh, in Premier League uh, figures. It was not busy uh, at all. Uh, And actually, only £2 million uh, came into the league, which I think is probably a big indication of... um, This is obviously excluding undisclosed fees and potential add-ons as well. But uh, that lack of money coming into the league and that um, that money kind of moving around has stopped other clubs from from doing the business they might have wanted to do. You compare that to last year, £780.1 million spent, most of that, of course, by Chelsea and over £100 million coming into the clubs in the Premier League as well, which is a massive rise in the season before that. Surprisingly, though, 2021 was actually a lower spending January, 842 compared to 2024's 96.2. So, yeah, some interesting stats there for you, but uh, it really was 
a quiet January overall in both directions in the Premier League. However, Arsenal did do seven deals on deadline day, uh, none of them incomings, all of them outgoings, and we're going to run you through all of them. Kayon Edwards joined Leighton Orient on loan until the end of the season. Uh, he's a striker. He's been playing at youth level. And uh, he, along with a number of other uh, departures, is going to leave Mehmet Ali's side at under-21 level rather threadbare. Um, I think you'll see a dip in form, most likely, of the under-21s moving forwards for the rest of this season. Hopefully not, but I think that you will. It will give other opportunities for other under-18s to get involved with the uh, the senior side. Maybe we'll see um, Ismail play more games. Maybe we'll see uh, Chido Obi-Martin play more games. Maybe... Uh, Noenari and, and Lewis Skelly will be getting obviously more involved, although they have been called up a number of times to the Premier League squad because of numbers. So we will see who gets the call up, who gets more games and uh, who gets more opportunities. But Kayon Edwards joins Leighton Orient until the end of the season. Uh, Zaymon Louis has joined Reading on loan to the end of the season, a defender. Uh, Reading are in a little bit of chaos, so I'm not sure how successful this loan is going to be for Zayn, but keep those fingers crossed that he can help them out during what is a very, very difficult time for the club. Uh, Charles Sago Jr. has gone and joined Swansea on loan until the end of the season as well. Really a good move for him, moving to the Championship. He's already made his Arsenal debut in the League Cup this season against Brentford. And now he gets the opportunity to play with Charlie Patino at Champions League level. Another really good bit of business by Arsenal to get him some Championship level football for the rest of the season. Miguel Aziz has finally left Arsenal on a permanent contract. This has been coming for quite some time. He joins third tier Spanish side Atletico Belérez, um, who I have never even heard of before. Um, but Miguel Aziz's story with Arsenal, despite all the hype initially, despite all of the, the clamour and the expectations surrounding Miguel Aziz, he has now left the club and will spend uh, the next portion of his career in Spain, he holds a Spanish passport, which means it's much, much easier for him to make that switch to Spain. And that's why that deal happened. And he's going to try and revive his career in Spanish football. But uh, the Arsenal um, youth player has, has sadly not been able to fulfill that potential that many thought he might have. Uh, Lino Souza uh, has joined Villa and then he was sent immediately on loan to Plymouth Argyle for the rest of the season. This is for an undisclosed fee. We don't know how much Arsenal have received in the deal for Lano Souza. I've tried uh, my hardest to try and get you some figures on that yesterday, but there was nothing forthcoming about how much was spent on Lino Souza. So maybe we'll get some uh, some some uh, information about that in the coming kind of uh, days, weeks, maybe months, uh, and we'll let you know if we do. But uh, I'd imagine there was some decent fee involved actually to take Lino Souza to Aston Villa but any information on that we will get it and we'll give it to you same goes for not for Adley uh, who I've managed to misspell but Bradley uh, Ibrahim of course who was a midfielder in the Arsenal Youth Academy has joined her to Berlin on a permanent move as well uh, again another undisclosed fee no information about how much Arsenal will be receiving in this deal. Um, it makes sense that he's moving on. Miles Lewis Skelly, of course, has kind of risen above him in the pecking order in the potential pathway to the Arsenal senior team. So he has left the club on a permanent move as well. And that'd be a big blow to Mehmet Ali's under-21 side because he was doing very, very well for them. And he already made the senior bench on a number of occasions. Also, Alex Runison has left the club. Uh, he's terminated his contract by mutual agreement with Arsenal and then has joined FC Copenhagen on a permanent until, um, well, on a, uh, a length of contract, which I think will be of a, a delight to him to get some regular game time, perhaps. Although uh, there's no guarantees even there because FC Copenhagen, of course, a Champions League club and very, very good in the Danish uh, top tier and uh, a, a place I've been to, the stadium I've been to. It's an amazing city and an amazing club. But uh, Runison, will he get the minutes there? We'll have to wait and see. But his deal was mutually terminated with the club um, before he left to join the Danish side. Omar Rekic could still leave. Savet, the Swiss side, are said to be interested. The Swiss window remains open for some time. And so there could be a deal still to be done with Omar Rekic. But at the moment, that deal has not been done. So the uh, defender that spent time with Sparta Rotterdam and, of course, Wigan Athletic for the first half of this season, he could yet still... Um, move on and could leave the club uh, if indeed he finds a club like Savet, who he has been linked to, that has a window that remains open. The same goes for Marquinhos, who is said to be in talks, according to the Evening Standard, with the Corinthians, or not the Corinthians, just Corinthians, um, in Brazil. But the Brazilian market remains open 
until uh, until March, uh, mid March actually. So the Brazilian under twenty three player who's currently actually with the Brazilian youth side playing the uh, the pre Olympic tournament. However, uh, Brazil did play and lose three one to Venezuela in that game. Now apparently Marquinhos um, played in kind of a midfield role in the team. That's a, I mean, the lineup might be wrong, the one that I'm looking at, but. Marquinhos was was played in more of a central role, it seems, for Brazil's under-23s, was substituted in that 3-1 defeat to Venezuela. Um, but uh, I don't think it mattered all that much. I think Brazil had already kind of finished top of their group. They had indeed by nine points, so it didn't actually... Uh, I don't think it mattered too much. But uh, certainly they'll be looking to now progress to... I don't really know how that that's kind of situation works. I think it goes into like a final group stage. So they're in a group with Venezuela, Paraguay and Argentina... Uh, they'll play, I imagine, a round robin system to determine who wins that pre Olympic Comnibol um, tournament. But uh, he could still yet move to Corinthians, and uh, in which case, of course, they'll be uh, alone, is what's being discussed. Uh, whether it's a permanent move at the end of that loan, we'd have to wait and see. But he moved from Sao Paulo and could be going back to Brazil uh, in the coming weeks slash months. We'll keep you updated if that, if and when that does, of course, happen. Cedric stays for now. Uh, he did not make a switch on a deadline day. Of course, the Turkish window does remain open a little bit longer um, for another week, but uh, Galatasaray have been trying to push through a deal for Serge Aurier, although there has been supposedly some issues with that move. Yesterday, um, the proposed move has broken down because of an issue with a payment. So it could be that Cedric now is a potential option for Galatasaray. Uh, they have another week to do any potential deals for fullbacks. But uh, yeah, that deal for Serge Aurier has collapsed, which could open the door um, for that move to, to for Cedric. We'll keep you updated if anything does indeed happen or change. Otherwise, Cedric will remain with the club until the end of at least this season. I, don't, I wouldn't imagine uh, him extending his deal with the club. Of course, he's on a very good wage of around £75,000 per week. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect him to leave. Uh, but who knows? We could be surprised and Galatasaray might indeed come back in. There's also said to be interest from other clubs in Spain and uh, Turkey, but the Spanish clubs, of, car of course, couldn't do any more business at this point because their window is closed, but the Turkish window remains open until February 9th. So that is a roundup of all of the deadline day stories. Yes, more happened than maybe actually people thought did. Uh, but what didn't happen was Cedric moving on. And also what didn't happen was Arsenal signing anyone either. Now, you can, of course, get the chance to win your own signing, if you like, a signed and framed Bukayo Saka shirt. A fantastic opportunity to win an amazing prize to put in your home uh, and to kind of show off to your friends, if you like, because this is quite a special one, as Bukayo Saka and any prize to do with him would be. Uh, a bespoke prize is described on the website. Any uh, any gunner could appreciate. For just three ninety five a ticket, which of course is now the price with the early bird price running out, you could win this stunning signed and custom-framed Arsenal shirt uh, from Bukayo Saka. This beautiful piece features a custom-made poster backdrop and customised inbuilt LED lights as well. It's a one-of-a-kind type of frame that includes the built-in television show and the youngsters' bright highlights at the club. And there is also... 30, that's right, 30 instant win prizes to get involved with on this deal. I'll give you information as to what all of they are. What this does is there is 12 tickets to enter a low odds William Saliba competition. So you'll have a one in 12 chance if you win one of those special tickets to enter the William Saliba competition. So best of luck if you get into that. There is a Sol Campbell signed shirt, a Ben White signed shirt, a Nigel Winterburn signed shirt, a Liam Brady signed and framed shirt, uh, a Charlie George signed and framed custom uh, frame shirt as well. And uh, then there's a winner's choice, which means you get to pick a home away or a third Arsenal kit from this season, as well as plenty of football prizes, site credit as well. It is a UK only competition as always. Link is in the description if you want to go and get involved with that. But a brand new prize on offer for you to win. And I can tell you that of the 599 tickets that are available, already 100 of them have gone. So this one is going pretty darn quick. Best of luck to those that get involved. Right, let's go to part two and your questions then right after this.
Okay, part two. Um, we bring ourselves to the end of data of the transfer window. That is it for another year in terms of January deals. The next transfer window opportunity, of course, will open again in the summer. I feel like we wish our lives away, you know. We're just constantly waiting for that next transfer window to open, aren't we? Um, but uh, overall, and I gave my thoughts on the transfer window on yesterday's phone-in show. Overall, I'm kind of expected of what happened. I'm not surprised by what happened. I'm not expecting anything really else to happen unless there's a surprise with Cedric. And indeed, that Serge Aurier deal that's supposedly broken down opens the door uh, for, for Cedric to move on to a, a side like Galatasaray. I'm not really expecting anything else in the final days of the other windows that remain open. Um, but I'm not really surprised that Arsenal didn't do any business. Mikel Arteta said as much before the game against uh, Nottingham Forest in his press conference. Uh, well, actually in the interview with TNT Sports, where he said he wasn't expecting anything to happen. They wasn't able to do the deals that they would have wanted to do. Arsenal didn't have the financial freedom. I also do want to kind of point out to people that the, the, the Kai Havertz argument that's going around at the moment, you may have seen this. Fans saying, well, if we hadn't bought Kai Havertz, we would have been able to spend money in January. This is a load of BS. Like, it's just not realistic to, to have that view because if we hadn't have bought Havertz, we would have spent that money on somebody else or some bodies else. We could have spent it on multiple players, in which case that money then still wouldn't have been available in January. So we still would not have signed anyone in January. So the argument that if not buying Havertz meant that we would have been able to do business in, in January doesn't stack up because we would have spent that money on somebody else. And if we hadn't have done, there would have been a hell of a lot of criticism for Arsenal for not spending the money that was available to them in the summer transfer window. So if you see that kind of point of view going around, do let them know what it is, which is just not accurate or real in any way, shape or form. Right, we're going to jump into the chat and tackle some of your questions then. Um, PW says, we could have got Breuer on loan for hardly anything. He was a good at Southampton and better than Eddie. Yes, a £5 million loan fee for a player that doesn't start for us and that Chelsea want to move to a club that isn't Arsenal. So he plays regular football and then garners a £50 million asking price in the summer. No, it's just not as simple as football manager. And it's not as simple as saying, yeah, that he moved for a very small fee. No, it doesn't work that way. Chelsea wouldn't have loaned him to Arsenal because he wants them to go to a club that would have played plenty of football and then would have got a relatively decent fee for him in the summer. It would have made no sense for Chelsea to have loaned him to Arsenal. And that's why it didn't happen. And that's why Arsenal didn't go for him. And he doesn't start for Arsenal either. We can say he's better than Eddie. Maybe. I mean, I'd love to know the stats of their the latest starts for Chelsea, the last eight, latest starts for Inketi, and who has the most goals. I'd be curious as to what that comparison is, but no, PW, that, that wouldn't have worked. Uh, and Asimo says, maybe they're keeping Cedric to see where we stand with available defenders with Tommy Asu in the Asia Cup and in Timber injured. It's not even that. The, the main reason is that we didn't get the interest. There wasn't enough of a, a push for any club to sign Cedric. There was interest, and there still remains interest, but there is nothing in regards to that deal at the moment. Uh, Darren says, I'm glad with the window. No panic buys and stick to the process, which was scoring uh, a signing in the summer all along. Uh, do you agree? I do, Darren. It was no point in, pa in panicking and filling up a spot in the squad um, with somebody that's then been locked in for us for a longer period of time. It never was. However, what I will tell you is I learned something on deadline day about the loan rules. I really would love to see if people knew this, because we've discussed that Premier League rules dictate, of course, that you can have and register four players across a season with two of them being registered at one time. And I looked at those rules and I was thinking, hang on a minute, Nottingham Forest loaned in the first half of the season Andre Santos, Nuno Tavares, Gonzalo Montiel and Div Div Divock Origi. And I was like, well, that's four. That's four players. And then in January, they've loaned Rodrigo Ribeiro from Sporting. And then they've loaned Gio Reyna from Borussia Dortmund. And so I was like, how are they doing this? How are they loaning all of these players? And so it turns out, actually, and because I spoke to the Premier League, I called up the Premier League yesterday to get kind of clarification around the loan rules because I was wondering how on earth I was misinterpreting them so badly. And so it turns out, actually, the loan rules are slightly different to this. So it is true that you can only register four players on loan for the season and you can only register two at the same time but this is domestic loans so Nuno Tavares and Andre Santos are the domestic loans from two Premier League clubs Arsenal and Chelsea Gonzalo Montiel I believe came in from Sevilla Divock Origi came from AC Milan Gio Reyna is coming from Borussia Dortmund and Rodrigo Ribeiro has come in from Sporting which of course are not domestic clubs 
So this idea about loans and the loan slots that we have was actually a giant misconception and that actually teams can loan players from abroad and it doesn't take up that one spot. Of course, you can only sign one loan player from uh, one Premier League club. You can't sign more than one player from one Premier League club, hence why we couldn't have loaned Tony. But it was a really intriguing clarification on the rules I got from the Premier League yesterday, despite it seeming like everyone's misinterpreted these rules other than Nottingham Forest, who've gone out and signed a billion players on loan. Surprise, surprise. So there you go. Um, PW says, Tom, all of it, three of Eddie's goals were all in one game. I love that PW's not even responded to the point why that deal wouldn't have happened anyway. It's not about Eddie and Breuer. It's about the fact that Chelsea would never have loaned him to Arsenal. It just wouldn't happen because they need him to play regular game time. They need him to be scoring goals and starting for a team. And that's not going to happen at Arsenal because, as you say, he's only better than Eddie. He's not better than Jesus, and they need him to be playing regularly. Uh, Martin says, Blackshine, someone bought me a single malt for my birthday. Uh, have never drunk whiskey in my life, so I sold it. Brandy, gold rum, and gin. <laughs> I love Martin just giving us a little bit of insight, but happy birthday, Martin. I hope you had a great time. Um, I think I saw a message earlier on in the show actually saying about a birthday that I might have missed because it was during the first half. Orin Lee says, hey, Tom, it's Mick, my dad's birthday. Could you please give him a birthday shout out? Come on, you gunners. Orin Lee. And Mick, have a fantastic birthday, my friend. And uh, I hope you have a great one. Uh, Reggie, so the championship can loan two players from one Premier League team. Reggie, I think the championship loan rules are different to the Premier League loan rules. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, that's why you've been able to see Patino and Sago Jr. both go to Swansea. There's also the thing about youth loans. Like Youth loans are also different. They fall under a different category. It's really complicated. It's far more complicated than I think we ever even imagined the low market, it turns out. So, yes, um, there is still plenty going on uh, in the world of transfers that we're still very much unaware of. Uh, Maggie says, thought you were an expert, Tom. Everyone knows this, whispers. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's just mad. You you read these, you look on the, on the Premier League website, you try and read the rules, you think you've got a grasp of them. It's no wonder that these Premier League teams have to invest so much money in lawyers to try and make sure they've read these rules correctly because uh, it turns out there's very, very different um, understanding of these rules, without a doubt. Uh, Marcus says, only a few weeks till the live show. Remind me, who are the guests? Uh, yeah, so it's... Uh, oh, wait, I'm not telling you because it's a surprise. Um, let's go to Amira. Says Tom Cashley saying, I called up the Premier League like it's the most normal thing. <laughs> Well, it, it, it kind of, yeah. It kind of is, yeah. Well, I did call them up and got an answer. Uh, Darren says 23-24. Eddie, 10 starts, 5 goals, 1 assist, 21 matches. Borea, 6 starts, 1 goal in 13 matches. Well, there you go. That gives you a good uh, kind of breakdown in the 23-24 season doesn't it uh <laughs> very good indeed thank you for that he's played more games um eddie and katia sure but he's got uh four more goals than than Breuer has got all season uh said he says tom are you excited to see what arsenal will do in the summer transfer window and if so which additions would be realistic it's the first day after the january window and i'm being asked the question who do you think will sign in the summer it's just the most arsenal question of all arsenal questions is it not <laughs> as soon as one window finishes, we have to talk about who we're signing in the next one. Uh, I think that is certainly uh, the, the most Arsenal transfer question ever. And in answer to it, uh, of course, I'm excited for the summer transfer window. However, which additions do I think would be realistic? You know, it's it's difficult to know right now, Sadie. I'm going to have to wait until the summer and I'll give you my answer then because there could be very different people involved in the transfer window than we might think there will be as of right now. Uh, Marcus says, isn't Hamilton an Arsenal fan? So his move was our biggest transfer. Yeah, massive news yesterday in the world of Formula One. Lewis Hamilton will be moving to Ferrari for the 2025 season. So he spends one more season at Mercedes before that move to Ferrari. And it's now very interesting to see where Carlos Sainz is going to go to. It's very interesting to see who Mercedes are going to replace Hamilton with to drive with uh, with George Russell. So I'm a semi kind of F1 fan. I do follow it. Um, it's probably my second-ish sport, I guess, after football. But uh, yeah, very, very interesting. I'm looking forward to Drive to Survive coming out soon for the uh, for last season as well. Looking forward to watching that. Uh, Yassine says, who is Edu giving away for free? Uh, we had one termination. Um, we had Runison was terminated the contract um, that he had at Arsenal. So uh, there was one. One player Edu gave away for free, unless I'm missing someone. But yes, Edu was the only one I think that 
that uh, that was given away for free. Hussein says, Pedro Neto looks like a great option for the summer. I've said this before. I'd love to see Pedro Neto come to Arsenal. I think he'd be an excellent piece of business, an excellent addition to the squad. So, yes, uh, Pedro Neto would love to see that happen in the summer. Uh, Vidal says, Tom, be honest, do you really believe Arsenal will win a trophy this season? Which one? I, I don't know. I've said this for quite some time. I don't think Arsenal will win a trophy this season. It would be a massive, massive upset if Arsenal did. I'm hopeful that we will. But no, Vidal, I, I don't think Arsenal are going to win a trophy this season. Uh, Jonathan says, 3.30 a.m. in New York, just hooked up with my crazy ex. Thanks, Jonathan, for letting us know that. Come on, you gooners, he says. <laughs> uh, Sessan says, hi, Tom, I believe if we don't have Kai Havertz in our squad or team now, we won't be where we are now. He is always available and he hardly gets injured. And I, I think that's a great way to look at it. I think he's contributed to this season. You know, he scored goals which have earned us points, like against Brighton and against Luton and against uh, Brentford as well. Can't discount his contribution to the season so far. Um, Kyle says, uh, Tom, are you afraid of Liverpool on Sunday or how confident are you? For me, I'm worried of Jota. He always seems to score against us. He does. He has a very good record against us. I am obviously apprehensive. They're a very good team. They're probably the best team in the league right now. That's why they're top. Um but uh, you've got to go into that game with as much confidence as we can go into that game with and hope that we can come out the other side successful. It's our biggest game. It's a must win. We really have to win it. At the very least, we can't afford to lose it. Um, but yeah, we'll wait and see what happens on the day. But it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be quite the game. I'm looking forward to being there. Amira says, don't really follow F1. Can you explain the Hamilton situation in football terms, please? Yes. It's like Kevin De Bruyne moving from Manchester City to Arsenal. That That is what it would be like. It's... And I'm obviously a well-traveled, well-versed, well, really experienced driver, still very much producing at the top level, going from one title rival to another title rival um, in Manchester City, going to, to Arsenal. That is the magnitude of this deal. It is huge in the sport. Uh, Twinney says, I'm happy the club didn't have the fan base obsession with signing a striker just for the sake of it. I agree with you. I'm glad that there wasn't too much panic around the window. There's always going to be some people that suggest you know, things that aren't realistic, like Breuer on loan, for instance. But uh, yeah, ideally, uh, ideally, we uh, we want to see more. Uh, Alani says, uh, Tom, I saw what you did with my question there. What did I do with your question? What did, what did I do with your question? Um, uh, let Tom says, are you seeing Ozzyman here in Africa? He's doing great. He was tested for doping. I mean, every player gets tested for doping, don't they? Uh, well, not every player, but after every game, there are randomly selected players that are tested for doping. So I don't know if that's even a story, is it not? Um, yeah, Alani, uh, after football matches, players are always tested for doping. Every player goes through doping tests. It's a story if they fail the doping test. It's not a story if they do the doping tests. It's also really important. Trust me, I've been in a mix zone after a game waiting um, like an hour for Jorginho to finish his doping test before I could speak to him. So it takes quite a long time because basically a doping test is they have to provide a, a sample and you have to wait for them to produce that sample. So sometimes you can be waiting around in the mix zone for a very, very, very long time for uh, for those players to, to come out. And they're chosen at, uh, they're chosen at random. So, yeah, I, I, I can't give you... Um, I, 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 can't, I can't see that being anything other than normal procedure but uh they're selected randomly um as far as i'm aware unless something got changed but there you go um hussein says do you think arteta starts smith row against liverpool and would you be starting him ahead of havertz i wouldn't be starting either of havertz or smith row i'd be starting Jorginho and playing rice and Jorginho together with Erdegaard ahead of them i think that gave us a really good foundation against them in the fa cup and we should have won that game and we won we should have won that game with Jorginho and rice starting that fixture so i would do the same again. Of course, if Partey is fully fit, I'd start him, but I don't think he's going to be fully fit at all. Um, let's go. Jonathan says, uh, she just left, mate. I saw Tom was live, so now I'm here. <laughs> I love that. Have a night out. Bring the X back. Watch TGT. That's the process. <laughs> that is the process. Jonathan, I hope everything's okay, my friend. Um, Matt G says, Tom, can you please do a phone-in show with Jonathan Barrios? Uh, I want to hear the story about him hooking up with his ex. <laughs> I love that this has completely taken over the show now. Everyone's really kind of keen on, on Jonathan's stories. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Um, let's go to, um, but, 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 it's just silly questions about people and their exes now. Uh, MM says, are we suited for the Champions League run-in 
or the Premier League running. I think we've got a better chance in the Champions League, uh, MM, to be honest. I think that's the most likely trophy for us this year because it's a knockout tournament. It's, you know, two-legged games and and you've got to hope. I'm very nervous. I'm more nervous about the Porto fixtures than I am the Liverpool game this weekend. And it's because Arsenal's record in, in European football, be it under Wenger, be it under Emery, be it under Arteta, you know, we've got a habit of just dropping an absolute clangor like we did in the Europa League final, like we've done so many times in last 16 games against Monaco or last 32 games against Olympiacos. I'm more nervous about this Porto uh, double-legged clash than I am about the Liverpool game this weekend. I, I just think there's 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 more, arguably more in some ways riding on that game because there's such an expectation around the Porto fixture. We have to beat Porto. If we don't progress past Porto, it is a huge, huge uh, failure uh, in Europe. And so I just uh, thinking about that is is a worry because they're a decent side Porto. You know they they've done they done well in the group stage game games and uh, yeah. I am worried uh, about that fixture more so than the uh, than the Liverpool game. Uh, Alexander says, "I wonder if Jorginho is mobile enough for the speedy Liverpool breaks." Well, he was when we played them in the FA Cup, so I'd I'd say yes. Uh, and Asimov says, "With the with the window now behind us, who's your starting eleven with everyone fully fit and available for the rest of the season, assuming that we're in the Champions League final tomorrow and everyone was fit?" That's a good question. Uh, I'd go Raya, White, Gab- uh, Saliba, Gabriel, Timber, Partey, Rice, Odegaard. Saka, Jesus, Martinelli. That would be my team for the Champions League final if everyone was fit. And it was tomorrow. That would be what I would go with. Uh, Alexander says, what is Arteta's biggest clangor? Is it the City loss? I can't think of uh, many absolute clangers. It's probably the Fulham game, is it not? Just more recently, or the West Ham home game. The Olympiacos game, that was a bit of a clangor. Um, Are the clangers those things that make those really whistly noises (laughs) back in the day? (laughs) Some people will have a clue what I'm talking about, but I swear there was a TV program called The Clangers and they made really uh, whistly noises. Um, But uh, getting back to the the more question, I think it was um, the Villarreal semi-final. Yeah, that's probably up there. That that was a real big, big blow for me personally. And where I was with Arteta at that time was a very, very dark place. Um, So yeah, the Villarreal game, the Olympiacos game. I mean, the West Ham home game was, was up there as being one of the really... The big clangers that we sadly have. I'm trying to think of any other. Um, the Man City home game when we conceded really late on and we were winning 1-0 at half-time, that was a bit of a clanger as well. The Liverpool away game last season when we're 2-0 up, that's a, that's a big clanger to, to not take all maximum points from that game. That really, really was as well. The FA Cup game against Nottingham Forest, massive, massive clanger um, as well as Brad is pointing out and Benji is pointing out. Um, so we've had some, yeah, we've had some real, we've dropped the ball on quite a few of, of the games and uh, it's not, you know, You've got to expect it. It's football. Anyone can win a game of football. It's just 11 men on a pitch in in our, in the uh, in the men's game. So anything can happen in 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 that in that situation. So yeah, there's always going to be some surprise results uh, here and there, and uh, we've had a fair few of them as well. Um, Aaron says I watched the uh, Europa League final with five Chelsea fans. We brave brave lads, brave boy. <laughs> I would not be able to do that myself. Not a chance. Um, we are going to end the show there. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you for listening across the transfer window as well. Of course, please do remember that we will be continuing our 8 a.m. shows throughout the season. Um, so if you've made this a part of your morning routines, don't worry. It's not going anywhere. Uh, we'll continue to bring you all of the latest Arsenal news, uh, reviews, transfer, uh, musings that do crop up leading into the summer transfer window. Of course, all the latest injury news and team news and, and uh, other news surrounding the club as well. And we'll be taking your questions every single morning. The good thing about the second half of the season is it really starts to hot up in terms of fixtures two times a week. Of course, with Champions League and some midweek Premier League games as well. It's going to be fantastic to see uh, what ultimately Arsenal can achieve this year. And uh, we know the squad that is going to have to be able to do it now. So we know where we stand. So no more incomings, no more squad changes. This is it. Partey back soon. Timber hopefully back relatively soon, maybe in March. We keep the fingers crossed that next month we'll see Timber back in the squad. Um, but yes, very exciting. I'm very much looking forward to it. Do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. Stay safe, stay well, stay happy. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>